Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel, The Upper Hand. If you've been following us over the last few weeks, we've been doing a lot of different assessments, and today we're going to learn all about volumetry. So with hand and upper extremity edema, you know that it can be associated with or caused by various pathologies such as rheumatoid arthritis, lymphedema, or soft tissue or bone injuries such as a crush injury. And we also know that it can impact the functioning of the hand and upper extremity because it limits range of motion, it can further impede vascularity among other things, and so it's important that we have a solid way to consistently measure edema in the upper extremity to evaluate and reevaluate the function of the hand and upper extremity. Alright, so let's dive right in. Man, you said you were done with the damage. Oh, we were to do it. Sorry, that was just one. I just thought one more would be fine. Okay guys, so we're going to cover a few points today and the first of those is how to set this all up, how to fill the volumeter. So you see that I already have the water most of the way to the top here and what you want to do is have your beaker here and I, what I usually do is pour water until it starts to run out of the side of the volumeter here and you let it continue to run out until the stream stops um, and so you can see the water has stopped coming out there. And so. Then you'll take the water that's in the beaker, pour it out, and dry the beaker out before you measure. So let's go to step two. Okay guys, so step two is patient instruction and hand placement in the volumeter. So Parker here is going to be my patient and I'm going to instruct him as if he were my patient on how to place his hand in the volumeter as we collect the water to measure the edema in his hand. Okay Parker, so let's go ahead and take your hand, your right hand, and slowly place it into the water until the bar rests between the web space between your middle and ring fingers. Just slowly put it in. And when your hand comes to rest on that bar, you're going to leave it very still until all the water stops running out of the tank. And guys, once the water has stopped running and the patient can pull their hand out, you can go ahead and let them know they can pull their hand out and dry it off uh, while you measure the water in the cylinder, which we'll do next. Okay guys, so we have our graduated cylinder here and we have our beaker of water here. And so with this graduated cylinder, it measures in milliliters um, and it's each tick mark is in five milliliter increments. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly pour the water from the beaker into the cylinder. Um, then we'll read it. So give it a moment for all the, the bubbles and the air to come to the top. And then once it's settled, we will read this. And it's important when you're reading the water measurement, a couple of things. One is to be eye level with it to get an accurate reading. And another is to be right at the center of the meniscus, which is like the water line inside the cylinder. So we'll get a close-up shot right here of what that looks like. So looking here at the middle of the water line, right at the top of the level of the water, we're going to look straight across at eye level. And Parker's hand measured 455 milliliters. And so... Ideally, when you measure one hand and upper extremity, it would be great if you could measure the contralateral hand and upper extremity for comparison because typically both person's hands would measure close to the same. If you cannot measure the other hand for some reason, it would be great if you could just record the measurement that you got on one day and then next session or next couple of sessions come back and do volumetry again and compare your second reading with your first just to assess the progression or the reduction of the edema in the hand. So I want to leave you with one more clinical pearl about volumetry, and that is with a person with a larger hand, if you're going to be measuring someone that's larger, has a larger hand, um, these graduated cylinders typically stop at 500 milliliters, and I've had patients who have exceeded that. And so if you're pouring the water from the beaker into the cylinder and you notice that it's on the path to, to exceeding 500 milliliters, I always stop at 400 or 450 milliliters and make sure I get a, a good reading there and then I pour the water out of the cylinder and then I pour the rest of the beaker into the bottom of the cylinder and the reason for that is just say that someone measured 505 milliliters well if I went up to the 500 mark and then poured the water out and poured into the bottom the tick marks don't start until the 50 milliliter mark so then that leaves you guessing what their true volume of their hand is so I would stop at the 400 or 450 milliliter mark empty the cylinder and then refill so that you at least hit 50 milliliters and then you can add that to the first total 
and get a total volume of the hand. That way that does not leave you guessing. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, the upper hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.